happened? Oh my god. Okay, Billy's going in reverse, trying to get stick. Not sticking. With you and I, the future is in case you're just joining us, we bought this boat for $100. We spent almost a year fixing her up, then we took on the Pacific Ocean as we cruised from California to Washington. For the next few weeks, we're exploring the pristine waters of British Columbia, Canada. Make sure to subscribe so you can join us on this all new adventure. Okay, I still think this area is really cool. However, so much of this area is not marked well on charts and what is there is like super vague. So. The last spot was too windy, we were too close to rocks. We went to another spot that was marked Anchorage. We have 180 feet of chain out and it's not even touching the bottom. It can't really cruise at night here because there's so many logs in the water. Good morning, everyone. It is a new day here in Desolation Sound, British Columbia, Canada. We are in a spot called Berm Bay in Toba Inlet. It's beautiful. We are the only ones around, but we've been here for three days now, so it's time to change spots. We haven't decided where we're going yet. We're just going to get on the move, probably throw some lines in the water to see if we can catch a salmon and decide on the way. So we continued on and we headed up to some of the tallest fjords in all of British Columbia and we are in Butte Inlet and it is gorgeous. There are no cat mountains, nobody is around. Plain old wilderness. It's so much colder here than where we just were. Look, there's snow. There's snow in the mountains right there. And we're only like 25 miles away from where we just were. so calm like two seconds ago and all of a sudden the wind just started blowing like crazy. I read that I think this is a, oh, called a willy wall. <laughs> no chop over there. In the middle, more towards the middle of the channel and right here. We're even getting spray. In the here. lee of the, I think that might be rain, but in the lee of the land right here, we have like, I don't know, maybe it's wind against like an eddy or something, but wow. We got a stern tie again. We're gonna drop the hook back up a little bit more first. And we'll use our line and I'll take the dinghy out and go to shore. I'll wrap it around the tree and bring it back to the boat and we'll just pull it in nice and tight. We also have to be super careful here because it's a 14 foot tide difference. Again, we don't have a depth sounder on here, so we're kind of just making sure it looks deep enough. The chart says it deep, it's deep enough at mean low tide, but that's the best we can do. And it's not Bahama water. We can't really tell how deep it is, obviously. We have very rarely been getting our stern tie set up right the first time. So we dropped the anchor. It was too deep. The anchor just went straight down. So we gotta redo it. Thank goodness for electric windlasses. <laughs> we never had one on adrenaline, and this would be miserable pulling it up a million times, getting ourselves situated. You got the surface there? Yeah. Okay, Billy's going in reverse, trying to get it to stick. So far, not sticking. And now it's raining. <laughs> the anchor's trying to stick, but it's kind of just like bouncing along the rocks. Okay, we're already too close to the rocks back there. So, take three.
got raindrops on your head. You got raindrops on your head. Okay, Billy back down really hard. Seems to be stuck, so he's gonna go do the stern tie to the tree. Ah, show me your setup. How does this thing work? Wibble on the thing in the rod holder. Much easier than what we had before. Not the best line for this. Don't do what we do. We're just trying to save a buck and not buy 300 feet of this line if we don't have to. And you should also 1000% have a depth finder around here. Have a what, depth finder? Yes. But it's so hard because people will tell you all day long, you shouldn't do this without radar. You shouldn't do this without depth sounder. You shouldn't do this without a million other things. But we, if we had waited for all that stuff, we never would have been here. We never would have been here. So at some point you gotta draw the line and you just gotta go and even without a depth sounder, without a radar, this place is amazing. Are you so heavy the engines are off? different directions really strong gusts and uh i don't know i feel like we're are we're dragged a little bit it's just not a comfortable spot so we're gonna move into this tight little cove and we'll do i think probably a few lines to shore and uh that'll we'll be more protected in there and i won't be so nervous okay i still think this area is really cool However, so much of this area is not marked well on charts and what is there is like super vague. So the last spot was too windy, we were too close to the rocks. We went to another spot that was marked Anchorage, said there was room for a couple boats. So now we're in here. We have 180 feet of chain out and it's not even touching the bottom. It says it's like between 30 and 150 feet. So it's getting dark. Can't really cruise at night here because there's so many logs in the water. So now we're trying to tie for um, points from the boat to land to keep us in one spot. We got the Dyneema on one corner. Um, we'll tighten that up in a second. We're gonna have this two on the side of the boat. This will be the bow line on the starboard side. Even though we were just a boat length or two away from shore, the middle of the cove is still super deep. Too deep for the anchor to set, and even if it could set, we wouldn't have nearly enough scope to feel comfortable overnight. So instead, we thought we might be able to run four lines to shore and hold ourselves in the middle of these lines. So we ran two lines off the bow, one on each side, and two lines off the stern, one in each side, one by one, all the way to shore, around the tree, and back to the boat. And by the end of it, we were held nice and secure, bow facing directly out of the cove, in the middle of these four lines in what seemed like a big spider web. I feel like we're preparing for a hurricane. I know, right? Now, how do we account for the 10-foot tidal change? I mean, there's a lot of length in those lines. There's a lot of stretch in those lines. So, I think we'll be fine. Especially this one. Like, they'll get longer. Just be aware, too. Low tide at 4 a.m. Do you feel secure? Yeah. Wasn't that For fun? For me, a little stressful seeing as we have sharp rock on every single corner of the boat, but you know. Didn't you didn't pop? We got our four lines on. There's really honestly no strong forces against the boat. Like it's all very spread out. We're tucked in this cove. So any force that there could be. Except is... we have waves coming straight into our little cove. Yeah, exactly. Cove. And I mean, it's a little chop that's just rolling in, but any strong force is coming right at our bow. It's not like it's coming on our beam or anything. I feel really secure. One that... of those lines you have connected is a dinghy line. 
Oh, there are multiple Danny lines tied together. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we're like the days of the explorers where yeah, we had to secure our ship. In unknown territory. In unknown waters. No anchor signs on an electronic chart, although there is, but not much information about it. It's crazy. We're in like 150 feet of water right now, and we're like land on both sides. Well, this wasn't how I had my night planned. I wanted to go day explore and find some bears, but... I'll we'll have to do it tomorrow morning. Now I don't even feel safe sleeping in the boat. In other news, Billy's been attempting to fix this light for so long, and... We... There was never a light here. I had wires coming down. Um, there was. It was a big, weird, white... Oh, that's thing. right. Yeah, there was a but big, that weird, working. ugly, fluorescent light without a cover that stopped working. I right. tested the wires coming out to make sure we had 12 volts, so that when I do install another light, it would work. But we weren't getting 12 volts to the wires, and I couldn't figure out which switch it was or like where a connection was cut at some point or something like that and finally sierra just remembered that there was a little panel back we, here we paneled over a thing and we never recut it out <laughs> yeah and and it was a switch for this it was like a redundant switch for this light so i just cut out the little access panel and just fused the wires we still have the breaker for it but now we just bypassed that switch so we have a switch on the light and the breaker and we finally have a light in here. <laughs> so much nicer. We can see what we're eating. By the way, it's pork chops with petite corn from a can and our last vegetable, zucchini. If we survive the night with our four lines side of the tree, maybe we will show you a bear tomorrow. Okay, now that it's light out, I can show you what we worked with last night. Okay, line off pork bow. Line off starboard. Ow. Two tree. <laughs> Dingy lines tied together. Back here. And Dynema to and from. Craziness. But it is gorgeous, that is for sure. Going to find some bears. Okay, I'm not sure if it's showing up in the camera, but we've seen two so far from really far away. I forgot my binoculars. Oh, one was like standing straight up and looking at us, but it was over here under the shadow of the tree, and then there was another one like right on this ledge over here. you could stay standing? I wish I could stay still. You want me to try? Are you getting some good shots still? Yeah. I also wish we had a different view. Well, the little babies are crossing the wall. How crazy. Or <laughs> zoom out so you could see us like on the same. I think this is pushing the limits of the safety factor, but uh, it is really freaking cool. We're pretty far from them. Until they get skinny. How amazing is that? That was ugly. Not just a bear, baby bears. 
and up like from our own boat in our own dinghy like up this river like completely in the wild I don't even think I could come close to accurately describing how awesome and exciting that was and how much we love this area. You guys, we have seen orcas in the wild from our boat. We have seen grizzly bears in the wild from our boat. We have collected our own clams, mussels, oysters, prawn, and like, look at how beautiful this is. And we're doing it all on our own. Yeah. It's like the complete definition of freedom. Yeah, especially getting to these places where people pay a lot of money to go to these like marine resorts or whatever. What are, no, what's it called out here? Oh, wilderness, wilderness lodges resort. and stuff to do these types, to see this stuff, which is awesome. It's a great way to do it, but it's even more rewarding, I think, for us to be able to get here and live it like on our own. Like we fix this boat up ourselves. We cruise it up the coast offshore in areas where people told us never to because it was so dangerous ourselves we got up here and we're looking at it with our own eyes it's so cool so cool <laughs> the sketch of last night's anchorage like is nothing totally worth it well we're officially heading south we hit our most northern point of our adventure and it's time to get Mountain Miss ready to list for sale. She's a great boat, we love her. She's officially for sale. Thank you so much for joining us on this once in a lifetime adventure. We couldn't do any of this without your support and we are forever grateful. If you enjoy following along, make sure to check out the Tula Shop to have a little piece of this journey all for yourself. See you next week.